welcome to Hot Weekly. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the Haunted Attraction Haunted Entertainment community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we return to you again. I know for those of you on the live chat, this is a repeat. But for those of you not on that, um, there's some sad news. Yes. We had promised Jake's Palace was going to be on. And he was on briefly in the live chat only. But yeah. for reasons we'll get into. Uh, basically, he had some really bad weather in Chicago. Had some basement flooding. Uh, I believe he said the word smells like a sewer yeah, repeatedly. Mainly because sewage, it's sewage backed up in backed the house. Up, it's, yeah. I didn't say that one a reason. But the long story short, he is unable to be here with us this week. So we've just scheduled him next week, Sunday, 8 p.m. nine East Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern. He will be here, same bat time, same bat channel. Just come join us. If you haven't liked Haunt Weekly yet, like us on Facebook. We're Haunt Weekly on Facebook, Haunt Weekly on Twitter. HauntWeekly.com is our homepage. Neat little mm-hmm. contact form there if you want to play with it. YouTube.com slash Haunt Weekly is our YouTube channel. All episodes are uploaded there for easy access and easy uh, streaming at any time you want. We're also on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever the finer podcasts are distributed. They haven't kicked us out yet. Yes. We keep trying. Well, you keep saying finer, and I'm like, finer and maybe not so fine. <laughs> finer and lower <laughs> Adequate. <quality>. Adequate. <laughs> We're <ish. adequate. laughs> But yes, folks. So, we had to very, very quickly pivot on this week's episode. Right. But and, since we were already thinking about this yes, all week. We'd actually had a little bit of a head start, so maybe I didn't need the full two hours to do the show <laughs> notes. Instead, you know, I'd cobble these together in 20 minutes, hurriedly. But yes, first thing is first, do want to highlight a few great resources while we're still in quarantine, though some places are opening back up more, right. some restrictions are being lifted, a lot of us are still stuck at home, and if you are, got some uh, got some things for you. Uh, first off, Scary Woods has a, in North Carolina has a virtual haunt tour, it is available, you can watch it, they streamed it a few weeks back, but you can go watch it yourself, facebook.com slash spookywoods. Uh, Beer Worm Hauntvertising has been doing an amazing series of webinars. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's facebook.com slash fearworm. They've done everything from TikTok to planning advertising. Came in. A lot of this stuff works for any business. They right. just happen to be haunt-oriented. Right. Um, um, also, if you need some inspiration on locations, um, virtual tour of the Paris Catacombs is on the paris.fr website. Go do that. That's If you've seen... Like shots of like bone, like skulls and walls and bone walls and stuff. It's probably modeled after that in some way. Right. It's either inspired by or very similar to that. Yeah. So a great way to get a little inspiration going. Yes. Another virtual tour that's available right now is the Mooner Museum. Oh God, yes. Which is awesome. It's one of my favorite places that I've ever. It is been. on their YouTube channel. Just look yes. up M U T T E R Museum. It, it has the umlaut, but you don't need the umlaut to search for the Mooner Museum. Well, that's that's good because that would be that would take time to figure out how to put that into a search. Yes, it would. I don't, I, I don't even know there's some on my keyboards. <laughs> <I don't laughs> exactly. I'm pretty hosed. I, I think there's like an ASCII shortcut, like Command Option yeah. Q Element O P or something like that. I don't know. There's something. Also, Haunted Honeymooners on Facebook, all one word. Um, awesome stuff that they are doing there. Lots mm-hmm. of great interviews has been their bag lately. Mm-hmm. And while we're here, according to my notes, I am supposed to inform the people at Code Yellow that we are coming for them and we have a hit out on them <laughs> for stealing our guest, Chris Gay. Uh, I'm sorry, wrong notes, wrong notes. Uh, shout out to Code Yellow. <laughs> yes. uh, the, another great Haunted Attraction podcast, uh, doing some great interviews today, Chris Gay. Now, we had him on previously talking about um, COVID related stuff. Chris Gay from Haunt Tech Tips, also an EMT and a volunteer coordinator. Right. Um, he talked about a lot of stuff with us and some of that's coming back in this episode. Right. Um, but also, he, talk, he expanded upon and talked about some new things with them. Yeah, and that was 225 for yeah. those of you who want to go back and yeah. listen to that one. Yeah, that is definitely the um, the, the greatest uh, COVID podcast we've done yet. Yes. <laughs> I, James has some big shoes to fill, but he's the man to fill them. <laughs> I, I believe so, yeah. I believe he can do it. So yeah. I'm very excited for Japes next week. I've, I've been on the high on it all this week. I just get to ride that high another week is what this means. Exactly. There you go. That's the way it's going. We're going to look at it that way. 
Um, also, I forgot, there are more virtual tours. There are. <laughs> okay. Timeout.com has an article of virtual tours of haunted places, but includes several haunted attractions, including Eastern State Pen, a.k.a. Terror Behind the Walls, mm -hmm. the Queen Mary, which is also a haunted attraction during haunt season, and the Winchester House, which holds events at Halloween, too. So you can take virtual tours of all those. Um, and also, if you're doing a lot of Zoom events, yeah. and you need some more interesting backgrounds, we'll say, Atmos FX, the people behind the projectors used in a lot of home and love charity haunts, they are selling Zoom backgrounds for $2 each, or I think it's like 12 or $4 each, or a bundle of four for 12 or something like that. No. But they include the haunty ones. You can also no. do Christmas and Easter and all that bull crap too, but you want Who the haunty ones. Huh? Who wants Who those? Who wants those? You're Nobody on this. You're on the wrong podcast if you want those. Yeah. Anyways, those are all excellent stuff, things you can pick up. And as always, join us Sunday at 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, as we will be right here uh, doing live streams of our podcast. We've been doing it um, pretty much since quarantine started. And it has been a blast getting to engage and interact with you all in a very new way. And now that we've gotten at least some of the technical issues um, ironed out, <laughs> right? at least most of them, I mean, we, had, we had a little bit of bandwidth issue there for a second, but we've got most of the tech issues sorted. It's been a lot of fun, and it's been a lot less um, intense. Yeah. Is intense the right word? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's Some of those that's early right. ones are pretty intense. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, since we are doing it live, as we said, we begin each week with a question for the audience. This we week is do. no different. We do. And this Crystal, week's question is, who is your favorite villain and why? And this doesn't have to be a villain from a horror story. No. It could be a villain anywhere. Yes. Um... Like, like, and when you when you you were the one that proposed the question, and I immediately got to thinking about it because it was a really good one. Because mm -hmm. a every haunt needs a good villain, every story needs a good villain, but every haunt needs yeah. it doubly important. Right? Exactly. So, I I was really keen on this question, and I got thinking about it, like there's two kinds of villains I really love. Mm -hmm. One are the villains that I connect with and empathize with. And I think that could easily be me, you know. Right. And to, villains like that, Mister Freeze, mm -hmm. uh, from Batman. Interesting. Because hey, I mean, I'm just saying, if you had some kind of weird terminal illness or you fell into a bat of something, I might go on a crime spree to keep you alive. Yeah. It's a it's a pretty relatable reason for doing admittedly very horrible things. Yeah. And it talks about how a person who is good and a person who is otherwise, um, you know, righteous and a sort of law-abiding citizen can suddenly become this hardened criminal and do absolutely atrocious things. Right. I, I like that from an intellectual standpoint, but in terms of like the villains that scare me and off-put me, um, it's the villains like Hannibal Lecter. Right. These are people that are just evil. Yeah. No reason. And the fact, and don't give me that crap or they retcon a backstory in <laughs> Hannibal. Lecter. They yeah, did not. No. They did not. We're not no. talking about red. No. No. Bad. 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 No. We did not discuss that among polite company. Yeah, I, I liked him much better before they gave him a reason for being the way that he was. And all. And and I like the fact he is super smart too. Because I, mm -hmm. I like my smart villains because, yeah. you know, typically we tell people that intelligence and education makes you less inclined to be evil or to do this horrible. No. No. Not always. That mm -hmm. is that is the lesson there. Hannibal Lecter is is an example of a very very intelligent vic intelligent evil person who does once again horrible scary things. Um, who are yours though? Um, mine is actually Missy from Doctor Who. Oh, good choice. I love Missy, and part of it's the actress. Like I've loved everything that that I've seen that she's been. And in. that plays into the well, of course she's you know the master slash Missy stared into the void and heard the drums right. and was driven crazy or some bull crap like that. Yeah. No, no, we, we don't talk about that either. No. no. Quit retconning bullshit reasons for villains to be villains. Yeah. Can't they just can't let evil be evil? Exactly. Why, why can't that evil be? Evil can be evil. But no. Smart, cunning, powerful, you know, and, and you know, that's, that's generally my answer because if <coughs> you meet Whovians and they say, well, what's your favorite doctor? And I'm like, I'm going to give you my favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> And and Missy, to my mind, was the best incarnation of the Master too. I, yeah. I, I mean, I enjoyed all the incarnations of that character, but Missy right. definitely was the most fun. A because of the the the, the gender swap there. Mm -hmm. They 
who is this Missy person? What's going on? Then they revealed later in the season it was the Master. Right. That was a pretty kick-ass reveal. Yeah. But also, it that actor just blew it through the roof in terms of getting across all of the characters' components. I mean, yeah. she was amazing at that role. So yeah, some good some good stuff there. Drop your answers in chat. We will come to them at the end of the show. Okay. Sound good? So none yet. None yet. That's fine. No, I'm asking you. You don't want them yet. Oh, okay. Well, we've got one or two. We have two. Okay, what's up? Uh, Right now, um, Jennifer Kelsey, who is one of our former actors here. She she moved and left us. I know. But the creature in the wall hanging out of the hole, which is (laughs) a character that she played. Oh, no. So she is her own favorite, which is, you know. Well, you know, we are all our own worst villain at the end of the day. I mean, there is something philosophical here. Yeah, exactly. Jen Kelsey, philosophy major. Yes, and Dean Carls, otherwise known as General Bastard, yep. um, has listed Alice Cooper as his favorite villain. Interesting. We have an autographed pair of his pants. We do. There is a picture of you wearing them on your Facebook somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. Back when I could fit into them, I cannot anymore. I have a... Added a pound or 20 um, since then. and He's a tiny man. <laughs> Just going to say it. He's a tiny dude. Anyways, that's interesting. Alice Cooper. And Alice Cooper is a character. He is a villain. So that's a very exactly. fair play. You know. Oh, yeah. It's the, completely different from Alice Cooper, the, the, the person. person who our friend is a golf buddy of his. Yeah, exactly. It's like the weird connections we have to Alice Cooper. And those two things, us having his pants and us having a friend that's a golfing buddy, are unrelated. Completely. Completely unrelated things. It's just amazing how weird elements of our life keep coming back to Alice Cooper. Yeah. Not complaining. It's just weird. Yeah. All right. On to the topic. Look, I know we're all sick and tired of talking about coronavirus and COVID stuff. And we did a run of episodes that were not about it. Right. But there's a grim reality here. And it's becoming more and more apparent every day. um, Yeah. That basically, um, even if everything goes amazingly. Mm-hmm. Even if we're able to open a full season and it's relatively normal, we're going to have haunts open while COVID-19 is a thing. Right. It's going to be out there. It's going to be a virus. I mean, like, the best case scenario is we do a really good job flattening the curve, which, like I said, things are reopening. So that's looking to be a long shot. But we do a really good job flattening the curve, and then we get a vaccine in early 2021. Mm-hmm. Well, that means if we open this year... Obviously, there's still going to be COVID. Right. There's still going to be things going on. And even if the vaccine is released, let's say, a year from today, Mm -hmm. um, there's a major problem because it won't be manufactured and distributed in time for a clean 2021 haunt season. Right. And that's assuming everybody just jumps at the bit to get it and there's no issues with people taking it and we have enough people get it. And, you know, I mean, that this is all big assumptions. Right. So... If it's ever, we're ever going to open haunts again, mm-hmm. it's going to be in a, in a COVID world. Yeah. That's just the truth. Yeah. And, you know, from recent news of the weekend, mm-hmm. um, this is something that we've got to be careful with because yeah. there were a couple of haunts that opened this past weekend. One of them, a home haunt. And we'll talk about it on the news episode it's in, gonna be in a, four weeks, in, but or three weeks three now. Three weeks now. Three weeks now. Three yeah. weeks now. But, I mean, there was some backlash from the public. I do not blame the public. I do not either. We were... We were, we were aghast and... Yes. A, <laughs> aghast. Aghast, I say. Aghast. I need my aghast. monocle for this. Yes. I, I, I require a monocle for my aghastment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so... The, the, but that's kind of the way we're approaching this, is that there are things that Haunt should be doing today, literally the middle of May, uh, for any potential scenario. And that includes everything from a relatively normal 2020 season to a completely canceled 2020 season and a still very chaotic 2021. So absolute best case, absolute worst case scenario, Mm -hmm. doesn't matter. There are things haunts need to be doing right now. Yes. And we we found 10 of them. And now we're going to talk about 10 of them. Yay. (laughs) It'll spend a few minutes on each. Yep. First one, this is one I've been working on. Mm Mm-hmm. Is start is setting up virtual queuing and or time ticketing. <laughs> um, this is something you need to start getting in place now. I'm actually not even kidding, because it's complicated. It's not as simple as flipping a switch. If people think this might be very easy, it's not. Especially if you want to do it well. 
is right. the problem. Uh, but getting virtual queuing and or time ticketing together is going to require a lot of pre-planning. And now is a great time to start that pre-planning. I'm going to say this. I, I've i talked a lot on this podcast about how haunted attractions need to take more direct control of their websites. Yeah. And about how they need to take more direct control of their web presence. But a lot of haunts have made the choice for various reasons to just kind of shunt that off to someone else and have another company or one of their people just handle it. Right. And, okay, yeah, I mean, the the advantage is you get this admittedly very messy thing that's not necessarily in your wheelhouse off your plate. The downside of that is, A, you're going to have to spend more money. But, B, when something like this happens and you need to pivot quickly, it's going to be more difficult. Right. It's just a drawback. Well, there's a need to pivot. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, right now is the time to be pivoting. And the result of that is if you do not have direct and strong control of your website, it's going to be very difficult to do. Yeah. Um, the good news is I've been looking into this for us because we're look our, we're kind of we're kind of eyeing this idea of having free tickets. Yeah. But uh, virtual time tickets every 15 we're, we're debating every 15 or 30 minutes. We haven't worked out all the details yet, but we're thinking it through. And the idea we have is um, basically sell the, uh, a set of like 15, like basically a ticket a minute type of system. is 15 tickets in 15 minutes or whatever. Mm-hmm. And sell them, by that I mean give them away for free on our website. But once those tickets are gone, they're gone. And if you don't show up with a confirmation number for that ticket, you don't get in. Right. And we have to turn you away. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm already planning the signage for this. I'm already planning the social distancing element of it. I'm thinking about the entire front of house operation because this is this impacts my world, right? In terms of haunt operation, I'm that front of house too. I, I I I've spent more time in the haunt doing these podcasts than I have ever when it's open. Yeah, that's true. That that's very true. <laughs> um, so yeah, something to think about. Um, I'm out there. I'm out that way. I'm out in, out in front, and that's going to impact my world. I'm trying to piece together how it's going to work. And luckily, there are several great WordPress plugins and services that can help with this, and they're much easier to implement if you have direct control of your site. Is what I was saying. Uh, alternatively. Start looking at what restaurants are or have been doing. Restaurants are masters at virtual queuing. Yeah. They're, they're ninjas um, at this. <laughs> yes. Uh, what were you about to say? I was trying to remember the name, but I know that there's one that's like reserve a table, and I'm sure that you could like incorporate <laughs> uh, that into your... Yeah, th- there's multiple systems yeah. out there, and... Also, look at what they're doing physically, like with the buzzers and the light thingies, and we've all gotten those pager thingies that... yeah. I don't know if that's something that you need to implement. And I would also look at what haunts have been do- doing that have already implemented virtual queuing or have implemented more less traditional queue systems. Look at like Camp Blood, for example, in near Atlanta, Georgia. They've long had a uh, virtual queuing system where you go and you mill about and very easily social distance in this outdoor mall area. Mm-hmm. And then you get called in when it's your time based upon the number they get, the letter they give you. Right. Um, we've been. There was another haunt in Atlanta. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's in my notes. Um, that also had a virtual queuing system. That one used paging. They would literally text you on your cell phone when it was time to go in. Uh, things like that. There are plenty of options here. Start spe- eyeing the systems out. Start thinking about how, with your property and your size of crowd and everything, how it's going to come together and what it's going to look like. Um, it, like I said, it, it, it's early to start marking the sidewalk. Um, but it's definitely, I think, just about the right time um, to start looking at what is out there and how you're going to implement it. Think it's sort of the general idea. Yeah. Like, I know we're going to, if we're going to have the virtual ticketing, we're going to need a lot of new signage. Right. We will. And so I've already eyed where the signage is going to go, what it's going to look like. Yeah. And it's going to have to be on all the flyers, too. Yeah. It is. Because, you know, we have a much smaller Facebook following than we do reach. Yeah. And a lot of our reach are people that find well, our flyers and, and things. And a lot of that is because of our audience. We right. have, um, we tend to pull, as, uh, as the area home haunt, we tend to pull from communities that don't spend a lot of time on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Basically. Um, so, yeah, uh, our Facebook presence is secondary to our in- IRL presence, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um and probably always will be as long as we're home haunt. Yeah. And I I see questions coming in in the chat. I am writing them down. That's what I'm doing on my phone. Yeah. So that we can answer them at the end. All right. Sounds good. So.
So I'm sure there's some great stuff pouring in there. Yes, and thank you for Open Table was what I was thinking Thank of. you. Thank you, Ellie. It was driving me bananas. Yeah. <laughs> Ellie, for the sake. <laughs> Ellie, for the sake. Yeah. Happy uh, day after anniversary, Ellie, yeah. by the way. Forgot to do that. <laughs> and birthday. And, and birthday yesterday. It's birth, her birth anniversary was yesterday. Yes. All right, moving on. Item two. Investing in sourcing, pricing, hand sanitizer stations, wash stations, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, and a lot of these things are taking a long time to ship. So yeah. now's the time. Exactly why I'm that. thinking you need to be doing this now yeah. is because if you start putting in orders now and you start getting what you need together now, it will probably be in place by September. You can definitely have it in place. If you wait until you know August or so, mm -hmm. you may not be able to get it in time no matter what. Right. <clears throat> so exactly. the sooner you start thinking about this and sourcing and getting it, the better. At the very least, you should be finding how much it's going to cost and planning for that expense. Yeah, because that is an expense you probably didn't have in the past. Yeah. I, and that's something I thought about. Um, did you, and this is a question for Crystal, did you ever see in any of the haunts we've been to a hand sanitizer station that wasn't attached to the portal lights in some way? Mm, Just like no. you're going into the haunt, here's a hand sanitizer station. No. Did you no. ever see one? I, I don't think I ever did. No. I saw plenty of them outside, like to the portalettes. Right. Um, but the, some haunts that had portalettes didn't even have that. Yeah, no. Y'all just nasty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Y'all nasty. Yeah. But yeah, be thinking about this and be sourcing these. And the reason is simple. Even if you personally don't feel very strongly about this, mm -hmm. you think all oh, this is overblown, whatever. Your customers, a significant portion of your customers, will not feel that way. Right. And if they don't feel that you are taking this seriously and taking their health seriously, um, they're not going to come. They're not going to spend money. They're not going to feel comfortable there. Yeah, exactly. They'll, they'll be scared for the wrong reasons. Um, so this is a way you can signal that you value their health. And I said that we were going to wait until get to the questions at the end, but yeah. this one ties directly into this. Okay, go for it. Um, will we require haunt goers to wear masks, and will and should haunts require it? And if so, I think I think that that's going to be a closer in kind of thing. Yeah. But I think that you're going to have to have masks available. Yeah. Um, even disposable ones. For customers. Yeah, and this ties in, like you're saying, uh, cheap, disposable masks, which once mm -hmm. again, you're going to have to start sourcing that now because right. say you get 10,000 customers and if you're going to have a mask required policy and you're going to offer masks to everyone that doesn't show up with one, you probably need, say, 5,000 masks. Yeah, that, at least. At least, yeah. Well, some of the big haunts, that's what they get in a the night. Yeah. They won't be able to well, do that Well, I'm saying if you had 10,000 customers over the course of a season, I just threw out yeah. round numbers because... Yeah. I, I, round numbers are fun. Round numbers are easy, and I, I suck at math. I don't math. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think you should be planning on requiring. That, that This is the thing about that. I would plan, since it's May, I'd plan on having customers wear masks and requiring it and thinking about how you're going to execute it, knowing that you may not 100% need it. It's going to depend upon, and it's going to be very situational, city to city, state to state. Also, there's that element of it that's going to make it very difficult. But I would start planning like you are now because it's likely going to be required by your local government in any kind of remotely crowded situation. Yeah. So it's a very real possibility. It could even be required. But once again, some customers will object to wearing masks. Um, I don't find them that uncomfortable and don't seem to really care much. Yeah. Shh. I see the neighbor's dog has decided to join in. Yes. Uh, sorry for those of you listening. Yep. Uh, we apparently have to keep the door closed. Yeah. Um, I, I, I really thought we were going to get away with having it open today, but right. anyways, because it's much, much cooler with it open. Yeah. And anyway. Weather-wise, it's, it's much cooler. It's much cooler, yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Next. Oh, uh, sorry. But yeah, basically, the, this investing in the equipment to help customer, the, the signal to your customers that you take their health seriously and to give them the opportunity to wash their hands, uh, have personal, have their, have their PPE on, have their masks on, and whatever, it goes a long way to giving confidence because people aren't going to be used to being in these types of close situations. Right. And, and even a social distance haunt is going to be closer than a lot of people have been in some time. Right. And a lot of People right now are still very much against the idea of wearing PPE in public. Yeah, and wearing, um, yeah, wearing so masks in particular. So you need to yeah. make it very clear that if you're going to have 
that as a requirement to go into your haunt, that your customers know that ahead of time. Yeah, well ahead of time. And yeah. then once again, and we're going to get down to marketing and that in a minute. Right. I know that's coming up, but this is something to be thinking about for your flyers, for your website, and how you're going to include it and how you're going to get these points across. Yeah, exactly. Number three, uh, the third eye. I'm sorry, go right. ahead. What's the next thing? No, I was, I was going to. Three, then read it off then. <laughs> no, no. Eliminating haunt contact points, and this is something that we went into in with great Chris, detail with Chris Gay, with Chris Gay yeah, who was in the comments. So if you have any questions directly for him, he's, yeah, he's he, over there. He's over there. You can chat um, him up. Yeah, but that was episode 225. But yeah, so any of the sheeting, the curtains, the body bags, claustrophobia tunnels, all that stuff has to go. Sorry. It's... Um, even if it is by some miracle completely safe to have it in October, people yeah. aren't going to be comfortable with it. No. And I think that's kind of the thing right now is like, because we as an industry should know that perception is nine tenths the law. Mm -hmm. The perception is those things aren't safe. Right. And right now they probably aren't. But if in you know six months they suddenly are okay, that'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if they are. Um, it's still not going to be seen that way. It's going to take a long time for people to get used to touching things, touched by other people, right? And being comfortable with it, yeah. Um, especially like massive, massive numbers of people. I mean, my, one of my favorite Facebook um, memes right now is, "Isn't it crazy that we used to eat cake after someone blew over all over it?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like, holy shit, I never thought of that. But you're right. Yeah, just blow your germs all over. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh man, but yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, these are things that are, everything that your customers touch one after another is a potential disease vector. It's best to minimize them and get rid of it. I mean, the basic line is this. We, we've talked in the news episode that Orlando is having theme parks. Orlando right. is having theme parks. You know, those giant things in Florida that people go to. And they're like two, like well, nine tenths the economy locally. Yeah. They're telling them, no, you cannot have non-automatic doors. Yeah. If you have a non-automatic door, it has to be either propped open or have to have a doorman or something like exactly. that. It's nuts. So, yeah, if theme parks can't have non-automated doors, then claustrophobia tunnels probably can't happen for a little bit. Yeah. Just saying. I mean, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, number four. Disinfection plan for the remaining points of contact. You can't get rid of them all. No. There are safety railings. Right. There are going to be, you know, walls that people are going to be touching just because mm -hmm. they might not be able to see. There's going to be points of contact that are pretty much unremovable. As a result of that, you're going to need to have a disinfection plan for those items. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, there are um, UV systems mm -hmm. that kill COVID. Yeah. Um, you know, our friend Dave, who works in the haunt, and some of you met him on the tour. Yes. Um, yeah, he, his barber shop opened up yesterday, and they have put this in place. So he has to take 10 minutes between customers so that, to make sure everything is sanitized. Um, so that's something that you might want to look into. Is, is it the very least of, having 10-minute breaks and using those systems to disinfect contact points? Exactly. I mean, you might do like five groups, then a 10-minute break or something like that. How you work it is going to depend upon your situation. Yeah. yeah. Like, we couldn't have 10-minute breaks between every group because we have such small groups. Right. Well, and it depends on, you know, it really does depend on how many people we let in at a time. Yeah, and we also have, uh, one haunt was talking about, how I think it was Fear Factory, actually, was talking about how they were going through every 30 minutes and spraying down those contact points with disinfectant. Right, and that was on... This week's Code Yellow. Yes. They mentioned that. Yeah. I, I couldn't remember. Yeah, it was this week's. The one where they stole Chris Gay from my... Uh, uh, no, no, he's not ours. No, he's, he's for not, the world. He, he, no, he's a treasure. He is a national treasure. He is for the world. You are correct. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But what's your plan, basically? Start thinking mm -hmm. about it now. Look at your options. What works best for your situation? Every haunt's going to have different requirements here. Start thinking about it. Start getting that in order. And start getting any supplies you need to pull it off. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Number five. Oh, and if you do get one of those UV things, remember, let people know. Yeah. We'll, we'll mention that again. Like I said, but. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Number five. Rearranging makeup costume rooms. We touched on this. Yeah. Chris Gay again. Yep. I'm stealing. I'm plagiarizing this from Chris Gabe, and I'm plagiarizing it by giving full credit and attribution. Well, yeah, and and it's because you know uh, <laughs> the way this point. episode came together, um, we we are going over a, a, a few things from Chris because yeah, 
Um, we're we try, we're trying in. to steer clear of the stuff Japes is talking about. Japes will yes. talk about next week. Yes. So, we, so Chris, yeah, we're going to overlap with you now. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, buddy. But, yeah. Ooh. It's just a June bug. Just a June bug. Um, oh, pretty good June bug, though. <laughs> but costumes um, can't be stored next to each other. Yeah. It just can't happen. Yeah, the, those days in which you walk into the costuming room and there's just these crude racks of costumes right next to one another, yeah. touching and being intermingled. Probably those days probably should end. <laughs> right, exactly. There, there needs to be physical separation between. Yeah, them. even if you just like put a trash bag over it, a yeah. long one. I yeah. mean, I, I think on the podcast I suggested getting a bunch of those dry cleaning bags. Yeah, those would last longer. Those would last yeah. longer, but yeah, something like that, fairly cheap and inexpensive. But once again, you're going to start thinking about it and how you're going to do it. Also, I don't know how makeup's going to work. Yeah, um, makeup's going to be difficult, um, especially. If you're requiring actors to wear masks, like not like scary masks, yeah. Well, some of them will, but like the uh, the protective mask, the PPE mask, yeah, the protective yeah. mask, yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna be difficult because how do you clean and disinfect makeup equipment? I mean, and that type of stuff. Um, they they mentioned on the Code Yellow podcast, yeah. uh, Barbasol yeah. has put out a thing about it. Um, I know that from going to Hong Kong and looking at the, um, going to seminars about makeup, because that's one of the areas that we're weaker in, so I try to go to at least one of those, 99% uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, you spray it on your brush, brushes in between people, and it dries very quickly and kills everything on it. And you have to remember... Um, Makeup gets this stuff right near the eyes and the mouth, the entrance yeah, point. exactly. Eyes, nose, and mouth. It's like right there. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you need to really double and triple down on any protections here. Yeah, it, yeah. if you're using makeup, you definitely need to like make sure that you've been doing the stuff that you should have been doing anyway, which is cleaning between people. Yeah, now it's more important than ever. And yeah. maybe it's time to consider switching to something less makeup intensive. Yeah, or switching the type of makeup you use because I would, I haven't looked into it, so please don't take me on this. But the um, airbrush that's contactless because yeah. you you're out here, so that might be safer. But I don't know. I haven't seen anything about it. Yeah, that's something to research. Honestly, don't don't yeah. don't take our. We're not experts on that. No. We're not experts on any element of disease vectors and all that. Mm -hmm. And also the idea, like you said, masks as part of costumes. Right. Um. You're probably going to want to have your actor's mask, once again, if nothing else, then for that signal right. that um, yeah. we're taking this seriously, we're taking your health seriously. No. Um, other than that, I mean, you need to have that there. So that that even if you don't require your customers to have it, right. that's a good habit to have. Yeah. How does that work with costumes? How does that work with the elements that are doing the makeup and so forth? Right. It's a tough question. It is, and I think that it's, you know, something that could be really cool to, like, blend it in, the mask and the makeup together. You know, yeah. I, I'm not sure how you could do that safely. but if there <laughs> Oh, I'm sure there's some latex ninjas out there that have already been working on this. And yeah. We're not, we're not makeup people. It's one, like you said, it's one of the areas we're weaker in. Right. Um, I never, I, I, my character's masked for a goddamn good reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't make up um, <laughs> at all, but, so, yeah. No. Uh, number six. Yes. Uh, reducing actor count. Look, this is my I hate to say it moment, or one of my multiple I hate to say it moments. Right. But haunts are going to need to run with fewer actors mm -hmm. in 2020, definitely, possibly 2021, too. Um, so start thinking about how you can arrange your haunt to maximize scares per actor and ideally doing it while maintaining social distancing. Right. And I know that this is something that we will get into yes. more detail next week is this. Yeah, this is the, 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 where I'm towing in on Japes' space and trying to be very careful here not to spoil any of his wonderful thoughts and ideas. Right. Because he has some really kick-ass stuff here. So basically, if you're interested in this, tune in next week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Um, I will say Fear Factory said that they were changing... They're, they they use they traditionally have used the uh, props as the distract and the actor as the startle, something that we preach. Yeah. They were switching up their haunt to do the reverse, actor distract, to trigger a prop as the startle. I don't know how that's going to work. They're doing it at the yeah. end of the month. There's a, So we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. In fact, we know someone that's actually going to be going there and will get us a report. Okay. So we will have inside intel. I'm not sure I've heard this. Uh, yeah, I, I just now remember to tell you. Oh, Okay. <laughs> 
we're doing it live. I'm a great partner, by the way. I communicate so gooder. So gooder. I'm a good. I'm the goodest gooder. communicator. I'm the goodest. Uh, that seems about perfect. Oh, uh, but yeah. Also, um, one thought some I've seen multiple times. What about adding Lexan slash plexiglass to drop panels to the outside skin, so that way mm -hmm. the actor can still do the be close, but it's still physically separated. Right. Well, and that's one of the things I've been playing with in my mind the last couple of days is that the screens that everybody's seeing now for protection, if those become drop panels, Ooh. that that's something that you could think of. Um, yeah. there, there's... You'd have to think about. I'm, I'm thinking about what the repercussions of that would be in it and how if it's uh, if it would be too triggering for some people. We'll see so, how this goes, but yeah, yeah. But as always, with the actor count, it's all about the physical distance and separation considerations. You know, haunts having four actors in a room in a crowded room, just hanging out all day and scaring customers. Probably made for some very effective scares, but probably is not the wisest idea in twenty twenty. No. Now this was your suggestion, so seven. Okay, seven. Marketing and merchandising. This yeah. is, actually came up um, the first part of this actually came up in a meeting that I was on for work um, where they were talking about getting branded face mask. Um, and some haunt, haunts can do really cool, you know, custom face mask, not just with your brand. Obviously you want your logo or something on it. Yeah. But you could do monster ones or fangs or anything like that. Um, haunt shirts already has some uh, that are available that are haunt themed, uh, you know, so it's it's something worth looking into, but I, I really like the idea of your logo, you know, make it a combo, get the t-shirt and the the mask for, you know, a couple bucks off or something. Yeah. Could really I, I, well. I think the idea of doing custom masks is, because masks are going to be fairly normalized. Yeah. Like I said, I know that there's that whole divide over people who don't want to wear masks, whatever. Enough people are wearing masks that you could definitely make money selling goddamn masks. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and you, also, though, part of this is now is a good time to start advertising what the steps you are taking to protect people. Exactly. If you are right now in the haunt working on saying, adding the plexiglass dividers or right. removing those contact points, those things we were just discussing... Yeah. Now be a good time. Put that on your social media. Get it out there mm -hmm. that you are doing these things, that you are taking this seriously. Right. Let people know that they can trust you with their health and safety, even during a pandemic. Yeah, I would have a whole COVID response section for your website. Mm -hmm. This is this is what we we're doing. This is how you're going to stay safe. These are here. how this haunt's going to be different this year. Yeah. This is the changes we're looking at making. Obviously, we're listening to local and leaders and so forth, and. Mm -hmm will abide by whatever rules they set, but these are the changes we're making proactively. Right, and don't make that, um, don't make it something that you hide. Yeah. You want this out there. You want to be as transparent as possible with and, this. And it also lets your customers know what is going to be different. We're reducing, say things like we're going to be reducing actor count. Well, that lets your customers know that it won't be as full as it was the previous year, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a different experience, and who knows, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, yeah. Be thinking about it. And also, you suggested making quarantine shirts to sell now. Well, yeah. You yeah. know. Hey, ever the opportunist we are. But we are. I, well, you know. And I am too. I'm not knocking The reason it. I thought about that is because Ellie has bought two COVID shirts, one for knitting and one for crocheting. This indeed she has. She so has bought... if you have one, you know, with Monsters Quarantine or something, you know, I would buy that. I would wear that. Yeah, that, you could do a lot of interesting things there yeah. with it, and and both sell some good shirts and hawk your brand a little bit too. Mm -hmm. I, I like that idea. Number eight. This is a depressing one. <laughs> yeah. A new business plan. Look, um, because of virtual queuing, because of social distancing, and just because of a likely recession, uh, your throughput and attendance is likely to be down this year. Yeah. There's just no two ways around it. Even if we do have a relatively normal haunt season, that doesn't mean we're going to have a normal haunt crowd. Right. <clears throat> we might, because home haunt, we're free, yeah. but paid haunts are going to struggle with that. Right. <clears throat> um, so here's the thing. Ask yourself, how do you turn a profit with just 50% of your capacity? Right. And, and I think 50% is a good starting point. 
Yeah, because a lot of people are at 25 right now, but there are plans to go up to 75 by the end of summer. Yeah, but just to, don't just, know if those plans are going to stay there. But yeah, you know. but just assume, for the sake of interest here, that you have half your capacity, you have half the crowd, half the people, half of everything. How do you handle this? Do you open for more nights? Do you you open more nights? Maybe do more Tuesdays through Thursdays, right? Monday Monday through Thursdays, and that way you can space out your audience more and sell more time tickets. Do you hire fewer actors? Right. Do you what what sacrifices do you make? What costs do you save? Or how do you spread it out so that you know you you can earn a turn a profit this year? Right. And the other <clears> thing <throat> is back in episode two. Th- Oh seven, we talked about how to raise prices without people pissing people off. Yeah, if you're putting in, you know, some of these things like the UV and the hand sanitizers, make sure that you say that that's that you need to make up for that. Yeah, you know, I agree. So yeah. this might be a time to look at raising your cost, especially if you haven't done it in a while. Yeah. Um, I you, think most you, people are going to understand. Yeah, because you have a legit excuse and that we yeah. incurred all these new expenses. And we expect less customers. Yeah. So and, and also, and this is another thing to think about, is if you're on a time ticketing system, there's no VIP anymore. Right. Exactly. There's no upcharge. Right. Everyone's VIP. That's how Fear Factory was yeah. promoting it. Everyone's VIP, which is true and untrue, but it means there is no VIP experience. Yeah. So, yeah, no. And that might be something. Maybe bonus number 11. Sorry, throwing it out now. Uh, yeah. Think about how you can revamp the VIP and up, upcharge experience if you're doing time ticketing. Yeah, and I well, think that ties in with the marketing merchandising, yeah. too. Yeah. What are you going to do? Are you going to offer a package with a T-shirt and a mask? Yeah, exactly. A t-shirt, mask, and a time ticket? Yeah, exactly. I can actually see this. Yeah. Kind of, that idea kind of rocks. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Pay more for your, you know, your time for ticket. premium time tickets. Yeah. Because, you know... Premium times like ten to midnight. Yeah, that's the other thing is you could offer di- price differentials based upon the exact time. Show up at seven, get a discount compared to someone that shows up at ten or eleven. Yeah, there, mm-hmm. there, how's price differentiation going to work? That's, that's, that's some good stuff there. We should be like yeah. doing a podcast or something. I know. <laughs> what are we doing? Just sitting here talking. What the, I'm talking to each other randomly <laughs> in front of all this weird electric electronic equipment. Yeah. <laughs> all right, number nine. Writing new rules for customers and actors. I don't want to talk about the actor side because Japes is going to cover that. Right. And his, his stuff is way better than anything I could come up with. Yeah. And a real quick good point um, allow for slower walkthroughs. Yes. Oh, excellent point. Yeah. Excellent point. Thank you, oh, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. Um, number nine. Yeah. New, writing new rules for customers and actors. I don't, like I said, I don't want to talk about the actors. Japes has that. He right. has it nailed. Um, so stay tuned next week for that. But. Yeah, the rules for your customers, that big rule sign that you have, mm-hmm. it's going to be a wee little bit different, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> going to have a few additions. Yeah, yeah, um, it, it is. And, and that's something that you're going to want to think about, put on your rules, Yeah. and whether or not you get just a COVID rules sign made to put next to your regular home yeah. rules, or and, and I'm, how I'm are not, you going to get that out to the people? Yeah, and I'm not saying run out to the print shop now and print up new rule banners. No, because it, well, it's still changing. It's still, it's still, it's still evolving. But start thinking about those rules. Start writing them, maybe doing some drafts, maybe kick them around with your actors um, doing that. Uh, mm-hmm. Get to work. That's something to be thinking about. And so, yeah... The, it, this is going to impact nearly every aspect of the haunt experience and the haunt business. Mm-hmm. And the rules are one of those tiny things that are so important, they get so easily overlooked. And Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, it's it's definitely going to be more important. How are you going to make sure that people see them? Yeah. Because not only do you have to make new rules Mm -hmm. and put them where they're visible, but you have to make sure that everybody understands Well, yeah, I mean, if you've got time ticketing, for example, that means pretty much everyone's buying their tickets online. Yeah. So you can't just put the rules right next to the the ticket booth and hope for the best. You have to make sure they're on the site. You have to make sure they're clear to everyone showing up. Yeah, I would actually say that there are things that you can make where you have to agree before you can buy a ticket. Yeah. To these rules, I, you know, I would look at implementing. Yeah, something looking like to click wrap licensing is what you're thinking about. Yeah. It's Thank a you. thing, um, and it is it's, it's going to be very important. I think this year more so than usual for haunts. And item number mm-hmm. ten, Crystal, you came up with it. You okay. get to say it. Check in with your actors now. Today. 
Yeah, today. What, have you talked to your actors uh, in this past you know, yeah. week or so? Two weeks? Month? Month, yeah. Have if you been not, talking to them? No. Yeah. Have you had a Zoom meeting with them? We had a, a Zoom happy hour on work. Yeah. I had a, a Zoom happy hour with a couple of friends yeah. on Friday. Yeah, get, and, in, get, get in touch with your actors. Get in yeah. touch with your peeps. Because here's what you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, one of our friends... Oh. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. Had not heard from one of her bosses <clears throat> for two months. The first contact she had with them... Was a text. Was a message saying, come back to work or we're going to say that you quit. And you don't want that to be your first interaction with your actors. Because um, it's not going to end well. Yeah, so just take a moment and reach out and contact your actors. Yeah, and actors are a close-knit community yeah. within your on. Um, they're going to talk to each other. So if you treat one of them badly... Expect that all the rest will know. And go back to the previous Japes episodes. Japes yeah. talked about this type of networking before. If you've been doing the things he's been saying for a long time, if you've been implementing them like in the run-up to this, you're in a good place. You've got those private groups. You've got those connections. Mm-hmm. You've got you know, their information, and you're able to reach out to them and trivially. Yeah. And yeah, they're... and I mean, this is part of your actor retention. Yeah. And I know that we're going to go into more ideas about how to do this in the upcoming year, but that's something that you should be doing now also because a lot of them are going to have people that they know yeah, just a or quick, people that, you know, you we, know. we've been lucky. We haven't had anybody that we no. know personally, um, but we've had our sympathy list has grown. I think we're at 20 some odd people we know yeah. that have lost someone. Exactly. In our, in our circles. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And basically this can be as simple as, hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Are you okay? We're thinking about you. Yeah. What's going on? What you up to? Yeah. You know? It could be that simple. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Mm-mm. Just getting in touch and possibly arranging an online event. Facebook just launched Messenger Rooms. If you use Facebook as your primary tool for connecting with your haunt actors, which a lot of haunts do, mm-hmm. Messenger Rooms is a godsend Yeah. because it's built into Facebook Messenger and will let you bring, I think, 50 people into mm-hmm. a room. Yeah. And so, yeah, we've started using it. We yeah. actually um, like it better than Hangouts for Google our Hangouts, get-together. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just consider it. Yeah, because there are, there are multiple options for this way to virtually get together and share the experience with each other. Well, that's our ten items. You said we had questions. and uh, Well, we, we built them in. So, All right. So we're out of the question. Oh, we are. Yeah. Any, uh, any more villain choices then? Yes. Oh, we got villains then. I like villains. So from Ellie, we have two. Mm. The first one was Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> well, this universe's Iron Man does kind of suck. We have That's to... exactly what she said. <laughs> but her second suggestion was Le Champion. Ah, Chris Jericho. Yes. yes, he is a good villain. He is a good villain. He's a very good villain. Yes. Um, Chris <clears throat> Gay said um, Umbridge from Harry Potter. Ooh, the Lord. Yeah, that that is when the classic... Everyone seems to think she's the best villain from Harry Potter. I'm not inclined to agree, because let's be honest, he who shall not be named is a little cliche. Laura right. Umbridge is... She's that kind of evil. It's like, man, man that bitch nuts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's kind of you roll slowly away from... <laughs> yeah. Maximus Christian Bryant said yep. The Butcher from Gangs of New York. Ooh. And Jacqueline Poeta, I'm sorry if I got your last name eh. wrong. Um, it was Maleficent. Ooh. It's her favorite. So we got a lot of good answers this week. Thank yeah, you. and the thing I liked about all of them, I think the only one that technically came from a horror movie was mine with Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Yeah. And even, and, that, even that's debatable if it's a horror movie or not. Yes. And Japes just chimed in. And mm-hmm. said uh, Umbridge from Harry Potter. He agrees with Kate Gray on that. Okay. And also the mayor from Buffy. Oh. 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 I got to go back and watch more Buffy. I remember the character, but it's been a while yeah. since I've seen it. So apparently he likes well, let me say that we... coded bad guys. That's directly from Japes. <laughs> well, let me say this. I've, I, I have not watched Buffy in quite some time, other than Once More with Feeling, which I rewatch far more regularly than I should. <laughs> well, yeah. It's got one of your favorite... Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's got um, yeah, it's got Nathan Wallace, the Repo Man, yeah. um, in his earlier life, yeah. <laughs> before his, he became a Repo Man. His alternate timeline. <laughs> his alternate timeline, exactly. 
Um, but no, it's a great episode, and it's actually why he was cast in Repo. The genetic opera was that episode. Yeah. So it's actually connected to Repo. Well, that and his audition for Repo was just oh my god, blowing, so yeah, you can find a video of his audition for Repo. Yep. It, it is great. All right. all right. I think that I think that's about all. I think we've got it. We're right at 50 minutes, so that's a good time to wrap it up. Yeah. And thank you all for bearing with us this week. Yes. It has been an incredibly crazy week. Japes, uh, know you can hear this. I uh, mm-hmm. hope that you are doing well. Hope that you're able to get that basement de-stinkified yeah. in prompt fashion. We will see you next week. Um, you're super excited about your notes. Tried our best to avoid overlapping with you. I think you've got a lot of great stuff to talk about here. I'm really excited about next week. Yes, and if you haven't followed us on Facebook yes. and want to know when Japes or other guests in the future are coming on, please follow us. Uh, give us those likes. Facebook.com slash Haunt Weekly. Um, we usually post the uh, next week's episode mm-hmm. on Tuesday. So what happens is Sunday we do the live, Monday's the recorded, Tuesday's the next announcement. Yeah. Bing, bang, bong. That's how it goes. Yeah, and since you mentioned Repo, uh, Ellie says Nathan <laughs> is, a, is a great villain, too. But oh, spoilers! <laughs> there's, not a, there's not a good character. There is not a good guy in that movie. No, the only quote-unquote hero is Shiloh, and she's only a hero because she doesn't do anything. <laughs> Literally, the only way to be a good person in Repo Universe is to do nothing. Yeah. That's what I've learned. Anyways. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any thoughts. You can also follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash hauntweekly. We're also on um, also at hauntweekly.com. YouTube.com slash hauntweekly is our YouTube channel. We upload all episodes there pretty much at the same time that they go live in the podcast feeds. That way, if you prefer getting your podcasts on through YouTube, yeah. we got gotcha. you. Exactly. But finally, we're all... We, uh, <laughs> we are wherever you can find <laughs> podcasts of all quality, as we just discussed. Yes. <laughs> Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Pod Bean, Pod, you know, Pod Aeroplane, Pod Bicycle, Pod Glue Gun. I'm just naming random things that are in my line of sight right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, anywhere you can find the podcast, you'll find us. So, until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this has been Haunt Weekly, episode number 233 i a 10 COVID-related things your haunt should be doing right now. We will see you guys next week with Japes, <laughs> barring another freak flood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Japes, take care, man. We'll see you. Talk to you next week.